afternoon and welcome to Public House Media's Loud and Proud. Ooh, I'm echoing a little bit still. Oh, there we're good again. I am so excited to be here with you today and to chat with a friend about a subject that I personally am very passionate about. Um, she's somebody who's killing it and doing amazing things. So let's jump right in today to our guest. I'm going to switch over. Hold on. I have titles for you, Sarah, as I introduce you here. Um, so Miss Sarah Falkins, here she is. Hey. Hello, Sarah. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm excited to be here. Can you tell us, first of all, oh, I'm going um, to go ahead and push through. Can you tell us where you are? Yes, I am. Um, so I'm based in New York City. I'm a New York City-based actress. Um, however, currently for Thanksgiving, I'm from Louisiana, so I'm back home in Louisiana right now at a friend's house um, in Slidell, Louisiana, which is where I'm from, but I'm based in New York City, um, right in Harlem. Amazing. Uh, when I lived in New York, I lived on 145th Street. What street are you on? I'm on 145th. No, you are not. Yes, I Are am. you right? I'm between. No, I literally. I'm between. Every day of my life, I walk by El Morocco. Do you oh walk by God. El Morocco every day? day? Yeah, I'm, I'm right on 145th, between 145th and 150th on um, on Edgecombe Avenue. That's amazing. That's, amazing. That's like, right, like when I was there. Oh, my God. <laughs> but uh, enough about that. Um, so you, yet again, we're diving into this topic of acting. That is your passion. That is what you do professionally. That's what you do with your life. Um, you also are somebody who lives with a disability. Can you tell us what that disability is? Yeah, sure. Um, I have spondyloepithelial dysplasia, um, dwarfism. I or little per I'm a little person. Um, it's something you're born with. I stand three foot ten. Um, with my form of dwarfism comes some joint pains, some mobility issues. Um, but overall, I lead a pretty wonderful life and I think my disability has done nothing but prove that. Amazing. Yet again, I'm so sorry we're getting that echo on my end. Um, but we can hear you perfectly, which is great. Okay. Uh, so tell me then, what was your journey into acting and the theater world? What's that story? Uh, well, I I began acting when I was like, actually here in Slidell. Um, when I was like 13 years old, all of my friends one summer joined this program called Young Actors Theater of Slada Little Theater. It was a community like theater program. And honestly, I started because all my friends were doing it. Um, so I did my first play that summer when I was about 13 years old and I fell in love and I thought it was so much fun and, um, I had more confidence than I'd ever had and, it was really fun to express myself in a new way. And then I, um, my journey continued, and I did call it. I did theater all throughout my high school experience, and my family was very supportive. And then when I was looking at colleges, I actually was going to be a psychology major and kind of do theater as a hobby. But it was my dad who really pushed me and said, "Like, come on, what are you doing? You need to major in theater. This is what makes you happy. This is what drives you." So at that time, I did some research because I was really nervous um, pursuing acting professionally, especially as a little person. I was like, I don't think this is realistic. It makes me nervous. But um, over time, I, I eventually decided to major through my dad's support. And um, I realized that you could get your master's degree. And if you did that, then you could always fall back on teaching um, at a collegiate level or at a high school level. So I decided to major in theater did four years uh, here down here in Louisiana and then was lucky enough to get into an MFA program in the city at the new school um, and got my MFA in acting about a year ago um, and have been very fortunate to work professionally in theater since graduating. Um, and I've found in my adult life that theater no longer is just about like being an actor for me. It's really a form of advocacy as well because I believe that Theater, media in general, entertainment is one of the best ways to display differences because when people see it, 
after they're exposed to it and it's normalized, I think people have less of a strong reaction. So now I pursue theater not only because I love acting and I love storytelling, but also as an advocate um, for those of us with disabilities. I think that's absolutely incredible. I love that you were there doing that. I'm jealous that you're there doing that. Come um, join me. I don't tempt me. <laughs> um, <laughs> did you, can you tell us a couple of, before we like highlight the goods, can you yeah. tell us some of the bads that you've encountered um, when going on this journey of specifically acting? acting. Um, I would say I've been, fairly fortunate um but a lot of my bad came more I think being in the south and it was part of the reason I needed to get out um I was in a very small-minded area um very typecasted very put in a certain place and I thought that I could only be a comedic actor or um I would have to teach to make a living there was no way I could ever make a living as an actor um and I mean that's true for a lot of people but I thought I was very much influence that my height was going to hold me back and told that by a lot of voices around me and it really took getting out of the south to realize that oh no there's like a whole world out there of people who accept people for exactly who they are and if anything it's more important for somebody like myself to pursue this career um and just like anybody um I've walked into rooms during my graduate school auditions I would walk into auditions at some pretty prestigious universities and people would look at me like back down at the table and then not look at me again, not watch my audition. Um, I've had that in a couple of audition rooms. They just see me. And I guess they hadn't seen my head on my resume. And I've watched people just not watch me or laugh me off um, or not take me seriously the moment I walk in the room purely for my physical state, um, which that's frustrating. But then I feel like it's my job to give them a really great audition so then at least if they're like, yeah, we're not hiring you, I can be like, yeah, but I'm not a joke. So I guess that's Boom, here are all of negative them. experiences. <laughs> oh. oh, I'm sorry. It's sorry. giving me sound again. I didn't mean to cut you off or interrupt. Um, and when you walk in that room, not only are you serious, you have those degrees to back you up as well, which is amazing. Yeah. I'm wondering, growing up, who are the people that you look to um, who I, not even necessarily had a difference, but who are the people that who are the actors and actresses you looked up to who, and you said, I want to be like them or maybe who did have a difference that you said, I have a difference like you. I want to do that. I can do I can, that. I can. I can. As a female little person, there's frankly just not a lot of role models um, in terms of just my physical state. But um, that's a hard question. I mean, Dinklage was obviously like huge for the little person community because he did it and it gave us all kind of like a sense semblance of hope. Um, sure. So he was really great for me. I think I was a huge musical theater nerd. So I would read stories of like Kristen Chenoweth, who this beautiful petite little blonde woman who would went into, I think an audition for Oklahoma and was turned away, turned away and told she would never do it. You know, it's really any actress's story I read 90% of the time they were told at one time or another, you're not pretty enough. You're not Meryl Streep was told a thousand times. She wasn't pretty enough for this industry. And I mean, look at her today. Um, she's a phenomenal actress. And I think that's, that's a common thread I see with particularly female actors is your looks and your looks are what are going to hold you back. And you don't quite look like this or that. Um, and I think I, in reading those stories, I was like, okay, well, if these women have been told no a thousand times and they're as talented and phenomenal as they are today, then I think I can do it. It's just, you have to keep knocking on the door and, reading those stories from people like Meryl Streep, from um, Kristen Chenoweth, um, and reading those kind of stories and seeing that they were told no a thousand times as well. And it really just takes one yes. So there's a thousand, like I think, female actors that I could name that I read that over. Um, when it came to disability, really Dinklage was my first like 
role model for somebody who looked like me that I even could look up to that had like a really amazing career. There's still really not a lot of visibility for, there's also Warwick Davis and he's great and he's wonderful. Um, but again, yeah. a lot of male influence, really finding that female um, role model in acting, I, I still struggle finding someone that looks like me that's really made it into the industry. So I think that's kind of my goal is to try to be somebody or to have one of my friends hopefully we can make up enough of an impact that some female can break that barrier and I can have a role model. I think that is amazing and so important. Yet again, I'm going to apologize about the sound. I am wondering when was it that you realized part of the acting also was advocacy and also was kind of showing that a part of who you are is disability. Was, was there a moment or did it kind of naturally happen for you? Um, how, how did that happen where you realized it was kind of all encompassing? It really wasn't until this last year. Um, and I've worked, I've been fortunate. It's been a big influence with the artists that I've been lucky enough to work with. I do a lot of disability advocacy theater and meeting those artists and seeing how much work needs to be done. Um, like people like Alliance for Inclusion and uh, Alliance for Inclusion in the Arts, Christine Bruno, David Harrell, um, yep. working with Apophate Theater Company, um, Greg Mascala, um, and meeting those artists who have been doing this a lot longer than I have, for sure, and hearing their journey and their story and the importance of realizing that what I'm doing is it, it doesn't feel as selfish and that there is a bigger job to be done here than just to make a difference for myself. I need to make a difference or help try to help make a difference for the word disability in general. Um, I didn't even really identify with that word until I moved to New York. Um, I thought it was a negative word. And then I met a lot of people who showed me how positive it can be if you use it in the right way and if you take ownership of it. Um, so it's really been a journey, I, I would say, this last year in professional theater that I found. And how much owning that word and being proud of that word has frankly helped my career. Um, and, and really, I just have to really thank those artists who have made some differences already before already. theater breaking through barriers. Um, their company, working with them, New York Deaf Theater, <clears throat> all of these theater companies I've had the privilege of working with and talking to and seeing how much work they've done and only wanting to be there to support. Sorry, something started printing underneath me. Um, but yeah, only seeing all the work being done and how much work still needs to be done along the way. That. I think that's amazing. I had... <laughs> I had a similar experience of it wasn't until I was an adult really finding my disability pride and really understanding um, that that idea of the greater good and it's not just selfish work that's being done and taking pride in a community. Um, so what I'm hearing is that there are plenty of opportunities in the city for somebody who has, who has a difference, who has a disability, to be acting and to be in the theater world. Am, am I right And what you've been saying to me? There's there's plenty of opportunities if one is just willing to seek them out? Yes and no. Um, yes, there's, okay. there's lots of opportunities. Whether it's really fruitful um, is what's hard. There's not a ton of money in it yet. Um, there are absolutely opportunities, and it's just patience. And it's getting to know people, getting out there, opening yourself up, opening your heart up, and really... And really Get it, you, it, it's a lot of it's making lot. sure that you're doing the work, you're submitting yourself, you're getting yourself out there, and, and find, finding your way through the communities, you know, meet somebody with a disability, tell them this is what you want to do, and then I promise you they will forward your email to about as many people as they can, because there are powers, there's powers in numbers, so I want everyone with a disability to please come to New York, so we can make a really impactful difference, because we are a minority, so... We just need to keep building. There are those opportunities, though. If you seek them out and you work hard, you'll find them. I have no doubt you could find something somewhere. And if you can't, 
then learn how to self-produce. And that's really a big part of the New York City scene right now is putting up your own work. And especially with disability, we have so many stories yes. that haven't been told yet. So, so telling those stories and figuring out ways to tell your story is really important. And there's a ton of festivals. There's the Solo um, United Solo Theater Festival um, where you can submit your own work, Fringe. And those are all great opportunities that if you're not getting the kind of work you want to do, maybe start producing your own work. Amazing. I am just so excited for you and all of the work that you're doing. What what are you looking forward to next? What's on what's on your docket of both life and acting? What's going on? Um, so acting wise, I'm in a production of Jack and the Beanstalk um, at Abrams Art Center. Um, produced by a company, I believe it's We Accept You. Um, and I'm really enjoying it. That opens December 6th. Um, and I'll be doing that through December 23rd at Abrams Art Center, um, Jack and the Beanstalk, and it's it's wonderful, it's a musical. Um, and then I'm lucky enough that I'm gonna be working at the Met in Cosi Van Toot as one of their supers. So those are the Yay! next two projects I have. I'll be doing that starting end of February. We'll start performing mid-March, and I'm really excited about that. Um, and then personally, I'm just kind of trying to figure out my day job life. I have a really great job, but um, I'm looking to find something that's a little bit more um, where my, my full-time job is more in the um, world of entertainment. Because currently I work at a gym during the day. Um, I'm a manager there, which is great and lucrative and keeps me living in New York. But I'm, that's kind of my next personal journey is finding a way to make my day job money, hopefully in, my, in the arts somehow. So that's kind of where I'm at in life. Yay, I am so excited for you. I'm coming to the city in January, so be ready to go grab coffee with me. Yes, yes for sure. Yes. Um, and thank you so, so much for taking the time to to hang out with me here. I apologize that I was, was echoey and that technology likes to mess with us, but no worries um, I am so thankful that you were willing to connect and chat and tell us your story. <laughs> and there it's going to go again. <laughs> Um, thank you so much for your time and for joining us today. Yet again, this is Sarah Fulkins. Uh, do you have any um, social media, like website or Instagram or anything that you want to tell people about? Sure. Yeah. Instagram is just my name, Sarah Fulkins. Um, and that's like really the only form of social media I have. I'm not good with that kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, Sarah Fulkins is my Instagram. Please join. It's public. Um, and I post about any shows or anything right there. Um, and thank Yay. you so much, Nikki, for having me. It was an absolute pleasure and an honor. Thank you, girl. I'm so glad Sarah and I randomly ran into each other working on a project. So I, crazy. We met that last person. March. Yeah, and I, I literally pulled out my iPhone and I was like, can I interview you right now? <laughs> I think, of course. And you love me. <laughs> You're getting your master's. I think I was still in school, too, so it was perfect. Amazing. Well, Amazing. thank you so oh, much for oh, taking the time for me. Um, and I will find you in January. I look forward to seeing you. Bye, guys. Yay, thank you. So yet again, thank you for joining us today on Loud and Proud. I, again, apologize for the sound and technical issues. Not anything in our control, but I'm just sure you enjoyed Sarah and what she has to say. Again, you can find her by Googling her name. And I hope you'll join us next week, next Monday at 830. We'll see you there.